schools don't start in a day. But there is an election coming mm -hmm. and the stakes are high. Hello and welcome to another edition of Liga Agenda. Today we'll be looking at Ghana's security, specifically the Act 999, that's the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act 2019. We'll be looking at the key provisions, the objectives, and the impact it has made on Ghana's security landscape. we also discuss how the Act aims to curtail the activities of vigilante groups, and also deter potential offenders and ensure swift and fair justice for those who perpetrate these offenses. My name is Matilda Boati Nati, and today on my show, I have Dr. Adams Bonner, who is a security expert, and lawyer Sena Hotel, who is a legal practitioner. Gentlemen, you are welcome to this show. Thank you. Thank you. I will start with Dr. Bonner. Being a security analyst, do you think the law has served its purpose in regards to vigilantism and uh, related offenses? Has it helped? Thank you very much uh, for bringing us on to this show. Uh, let me say hello to my colleague, uh, panelist, and yourself and your team. For uh, probably, I must say, uh, emphasizing a lot on you know, this particular act and to know whether the act has served, has served us. And uh, let's also remember the people of Niger in, in our prayers. And an act like this is put together to ensure that uh, what is happening in the sub-region doesn't happen. Uh, coups don't start in a day. Mm. Uh, it is, you must put in pragmatic measures to either stop a future coup or to plan a future coup directly or indirectly right. and so what you've seen in Mali you've seen in you know Burkina Faso Niger and the rest didn't just start by a day it was because of the uh, call it the the lack of political will and lack of leadership mm. uh, ability to perform a certain tax mm that has culminated into uh, what we are seeing in Niger. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, coincidentally, I was with the rep of the ECOWAS Commission. Okay. And I must also say that I serve as a board member of the Small Arms Commission. Mm. I serve, I'm a rep of the you know, CSOs in Ghana uh, you know, against Small Arms. So I serve on the board of Small Arms Commission. So I will say I have some knowledge when it comes to the area of uh, vigilantism and other related offenses. Mm. Now, to answer you directly, I will say no, mm. it hasn't. Mm. Uh, it was just a pure lip service by our leaders. Okay. You remember how the Vigilantism Act uh, came about. Came about. Yeah. It was the president just one morning issuing a fiat. I give you one week, I give you two weeks to come up with an act or I'm going to send something to Parliament. Okay. Tell me if one person has been prosecuted using that law. Not that I can remember. He's a lawyer, he should know, but mm. nobody. Mm. Because, you know, owning a firearm doesn't come cheap. Mm. Those who own firearms, there are three or so reasons why people own firearms. Okay. We started owning firearms, so you want to look at generational. Generationally, people use them for pure hunting yes. and then for festivals, yes. right, yes. in this country. Yes. Then subsequently, we started using them to fight wars mm -hmm. and for conflict and yes. whatever. Yes. Then the third layer came in criminality. Mm -hmm. So now there are diverse reasons why people mm -hmm. use firearms. Okay. And as we sit today, mm -hmm. to own a pump action is a lot of money. Yeah. To even go through the process of registering is a lot of money. <coughs> Those who actually own a lot of these firearms mm -hmm. are people who should know better. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying yes, to say? And yes. so, uh, tell me, recently in the Eastern region, a certain big chief had his people parading firearms mm. uh, and shooting people in a Galamse area. Mm. I must say, without, you know, mincing words, these people claim to be 
uh, as you know, people who have been assigned by the Ochehene to go out and chase Galamseas. Okay, this is in the news. Okay, I don't want to put your media house into the spotlight, but it is there. Okay. And these people, I don't know whether they were arrested. They were parading firearms and shooting at one another in the glare of the, you know, in, in the public view. Okay. If you look at the firearms law, it says for you to display a firearm, you yeah. need permit from the, uh, permission from the IGP to do that. To do that and so yeah. if I had a firearm and I put it on this table and it comes into the public domain, the law says I should be arrested. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have not been able to do what is expected of us. Mm. Today, go to Mozongos, mm. go to Nima, mm. go to Mamobi, go to Ashama, go to Kaswa, mm. go to Mozongos in this country, go to most communities, mm. as one say, go to most communities in this country when there are weddings, yeah. when there are adorings, yeah. when there are festivals, people are shooting firearms. Mm. We are, Homawa is just around the corner. Yes. People literally just firing you know, uh, pump action guns. And nothing is done to them. And they are not we are watching. Okay. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the police is doing what it has to do. Okay. But the the perpetrators, once they are arrested, oh, I am I am a chief. I am this. I am that. I am that. They are my boys. They are my this. They are my that. So we passed this law mm. with the intention of cutting the roots that of, uh, you know, these uh, right. firearm right. uh, issues. But unfortunately, as I've asked, how many people have been prosecuted? <laughs> because prosecution will tell you whether we've done well, well or we have not done well. That is a yastic to tell. Yeah. If you pass a law to stop something, mm. and rather after passing the law, uh, it's become worse, then you know. You are failed. The act is not serving it means that I, in the beginning, I was one of the people who were contacted to put in, uh, you know, send suggestions. I said I won't because I told them, seriously speaking, uh, I want to be careful. But I said it was a bogus law because we already had an, an, an enactment okay. which we have not used well. Okay. Can you educate? Uh, because then we, we, we already have some law hmm. policing firearms okay. we haven't used well and also what do you call that uh, vigilantism and other acts if you were to mm. you know you couldn't just go onto somebody we we've had various laws then we decided uh, let's make it worse okay right yeah who are the people digging this our soil and destroying our water bodies That's right. is it not the chinese mm. they are here yes you know we have we are acting as accomplices mm. to aid them we, we bring them yeah. and so mine is that you cannot discuss a lot of the things happening in this country mm. without relating it to uh, the vigilantism act we have we have we promulgated is being assented yes. onto but unfortunately yes. my dear matilda we it really hasn't served it's purpose. show me one person one person who has been prosecuted, has been prosecuted. and i will tell you without mincing words mm. we have pastors in this country who showed firearms, threatening people with firearms. Nothing is and, today. you know, prosecution starts and it is done on behalf of the AG. Mm. You can, private persons cannot go to court for our law to go and prosecute. That's so true. if the AG decides that you are a, a party member, so I'm not going to prosecute you, me, Adam Bona, can I do that? You can. I cannot do that. You can mm. call and call and call. If it's only when he decides that you file something called nolly prosecutor, that he will. And so mine is that until such a time that we begin to look at the whole constitution of this country, not mm. throw it away, mm. but do some amendment okay. so that state institutions and people put into certain positions mm. can act and act well. It is going to be very difficult. And just like I, my premise was on Niger, mm. Burkina and the rest, mm. not no one begin to think that as for us, Oh, we are far away from these things. Mm. The young people are arming mm. and arming and arming. The mm. older folks are arming. The young people are mm. arming. Mm. So if we don't do things right, mm. we are going to be overwhelmed. Mm. So as a lawyer, do you think this act has served its purpose? Has well, it thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Okay. And um, greetings to all your viewers. I agree only to an extent of what my senior brother and then an expert in the field you know says okay. to the extent that there are challenges with implementation i agree that the law has some short 
faults or shortcomings. Okay. But imagine a situation where there isn't anything at all. all right. So if you look at the, the history of that, that act, specifically mm -hmm. Act 999, yes. um, Vigilantism act and um, act Related Offenses Act, act yes. 2019. If you look at it, you would realize that prior to that time, there has really been a lot of um, political party groups, mm. people that have formed um, associations and groups mm. ba mainly for the purpose of intimidating other people. Yes. So you have all kind of names. If you look behind the, the last shadow Azoka of the Azoka Boys. The Azoka Boys, <laughs> the uh, Power People, yes. The, yes. you know, yes. the list is yes. endless. Yes. And so there was a need to curtail that mm. as well as deal with mm. the, the rampant issues of land guard activi activities in the country. But these days, mm. if you look at almost all the land related issues, there's one person or the mm. other guard in it. I can tell you for a fact that after the passage of that law, mm. the activities of land guards in relating to lands have, have you know, come down. All right. It, it's not totally eradicated, okay. but it, it's come down. Okay. But I, I am of the view that, yes, the law has its shortcomings, yes. but that particular law, from where I sit, I believe will be tested the most next year. Because why, why, it was, why, why, why do you say yes, that? because it was passed in 2019, yes. and we are in 2023. came to force fully in 2020. Sure. So three and years. yes, and so all those political party mm. groups, all those um, associations, the Azoka boys and then the things, yes. you, to a large extent, disappeared okay. or appear to have disappeared. But there is an election coming mm. and the stakes are high. And, and so that is the point that we want to see if these laws, mm. the, the at 999 amongst mm. all the other host of laws mm. put together, are going to have that effect that it was designed to. Okay. It's only at that point and beyond that I can confidently say that, okay, the, the act has failed in its implementation. But I, to a large extent, will always be uh, an advocate for the passage of laws for, to curtail social behaviors or social activities that depart from the way of the law. Okay. It may not be perfect, okay. but then it gives us an opportunity to start a discussion from right. one point. Okay. If you look at the act in the respective parts that it has it, mm. dealing with the land guard activities, yes. you would realize that the act puts in place punishment. Okay. And so I when... Know from five years to ten years, others from... Yes, so within... Years, yes, if you are caught under this law mm. as playing the role of land guard. Yes. Either you are procuring the people to come and, you know, terrorize people on yes. their lands yes. and things like that. Yes. You are looking at up to about 15 years 15 in jail. Years. Mm. Then fast forward came the Land Act of 2020, I think Act um, 1036. That specifically also created a provision to deal with these land guard related activities so that if you are found to also be engaging in these things you can have a minimum so the minimum for you is five years mm. and so the laws are there mm. for me mm. where the problem lies is the implementation mm. my senior brother mentioned that mm. festivals are coming mm. just just this weekend yes you know i was at the police station okay and gunshots are going on in in the upcoming festivals, and people are they, brandishing, you know, weapons, <laughs> and the police have had arrested a lot. So okay. th there's some amount of effort going on, okay. but the problem mm -hmm. that I see from mm -hmm. where I sit okay. is the political will and commitment, okay. because the beneficiaries of some of these things mm -hmm. are the people that hold the power. Yes. And so, if you arrest someone. Mm -hmm. The prosecution in criminal matters is at the behest of the state. Mm, mm. And th th the issue is so complex. Mm. People support candidates mm. to come to office. And yes. candidates are not from, you know, from outside mm. the space and then they come. Yes. They are from communities. Yes. They have leaders. Yes. They associate with certain traditions and religions. Mm -hmm. And so those 
groups and categories of people have supported the bid of a candidate. Mm -hmm. And so when some of these things begin to happen, mm. they begin to call on the favors. Yes, mm. we have supported you. you. It's time. Help us. Help us. And so we need to broaden the scope of these laws. Mm. The uh, 999, mm. the 1036, mm. the, we need to even empower mm. or uplift the status of the Small Arms Commission. Okay. Move it from a commission status mm. and give it biting, mm. biting teeth or teeth to bite. Mm. Until we are able to do that, at this point, the Small Arms Commission is just advisory mm. and advocacy role. They do all these mm. advisory and advocacy roles. People are having the need to protect themselves, mm. protect their assets, mm -hmm. because there's a perceived mm -hmm. failure of the system to protect them. Okay. People feel like if I buy a land, yes and I don't put somebody there, I will lose I will it. Lose it. Mm. And they have seen it happen mm. over and over and over mm. again. So when the systems are strengthened, when the laws are improved upon and it's reviewed, mm. I, I believe that it's better to start from somewhere than nowhere. Mm. And so now there is a law. Okay. As much as there, has been, there hasn't been much done in terms of prosecution mm. within the law, mm. it is still a law in this country. Okay. And so when you are found foul of that law mm. you can be held liable for it you can go to jail for a minimum of five and a maximum of 15. 15 in years. fact okay. when you are caught using offensive weapons mm. in the act of vigilantism and then land guard activism yeah. you are looking at up to about 25 years yeah. mm. then for those who have political ambitions mm. and then those who mm. are already in mm. politics mm. When you are convicted mm -hmm. using this act, you are barred from contesting public office. Yeah. And so the sanctions are heavy. Mm. We need to move away from, mm. yes, the law is there, the sanctions are there. Mm. We need to make them bite. Mm. And so I believe that once we can put some of these things in place, mm. then we can be making headways. Okay. We'll be right back after this break. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. So I, 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 I want to ask this. I, I, I'm not supporting what the doctor said. More like we have the act, but it's not serving a purpose. You, you are saying that, well, it's good we have to have it, but uh, maybe the implementation needs to be enhanced. Yes. Kind of. But let's look at the section for he say of the act he says aiding and abetting of activities of political party vigilante group a person shall not directly or indirectly instigate command cancel procure for so all these are just trying to throw light on the fact that if you support if you instigate or if you bring up these activities even as a politician the law would deal with you. Yes. Has that been the case? I think that... that so is it, it boils down to so the commitment. All right. Because if a government is in power mm. and one of its key leading members yes. are found culpable of these, this law, mm. there's almost always a loophole or a way around the law either to delay the trial or delay the prosecution. The that, that, that is the issue. You is see, it, it's a function of what it is versus what it ought to be. Okay. It, it is supposed to be like this in the, in the law, mm. but that's far from reality. Mm. And in fact, for most laws when they are passed, mm. you would look at the, the law as it is in the books yeah. and its implementation on the mm. ground. Mm. It's supposed to match up mm. and be exactly as it is. But there is some element of discretions that are allowed mm. in the prosecutorial process. Mm. And so this particular law was yeah. carefully written yeah. Yeah. to, to robe in everybody so that those who think that 
they can be a yes, mastermind. Exactly, with him, but doctor thinks otherwise. <laughs> yes, I, I, I he think you, you so will. many things were not factored into. Yes, you see, that. that is the very reason why we have amendment processes. All right. You see, in drafting of laws and constitutions mm -hmm. and all these, you know, you can't get it perfect. Okay. Even our constitution has been amended before, mm. if, if, you, if you're aware. So yeah. if the supreme law of the land mm. has even been amended oh before, God. then, you know, these laws are enactments that are capable of mm. growth. Mm. Even if it is perfect or it appears to be perfect mm. for today, mm. tomorrow new ways of doing political party vigilantist activities and new ways of terrorizing people for their lands mm. and their things will emerge. Okay. It could be cyber form, it okay. could be all, all, all these forms. Okay. And the, the laws have to grow to match up. Okay. And so I believe that once um, Doc is here yes. and he's part of the commission, yes. we need to see more of the advocacy. Yes. We need to see how the, the, commission, the, the, the commission is putting in place activities, rolling out plans mm. to put the advocacy out there. Because it, it appears that we only hear about these things in, on a seasonal basis. Yes. So when um, festivals are approaching, yes. when elections are approaching, yes. Yes. then we begin to hear these activities. Yes. The laws are there. Yes. But why are we not you know, ensuring that these laws are there? Fully Private utilized. individuals can can file a complaint, file a petition. Okay. There are institutions that handle these. And so if we, if we as citizens also want to be involved in the process to ensure that the laws are, you know, are used or people are prosecuted to the mm. full extent of the law, yeah. we must be involved in the process. Mm. Mm. Like our president says that we must be, we must not be spectators. And so we must be involved in the process. Mm. Mm. I, and I believe that it's only when we in get involved in the process, increase the advocacy, and then the, the, the institutions and authorities that are also mm -hmm. in involved in amendments of these, these um, laws, yeah. if they also come in and everybody brings their knowledge and experience on board, then I think we can head somewhere. Right. But then, even with a perfect law, mm -hmm. if there is no will mm -hmm. to implement, yeah. then it is as dead or as useless to a very large extent mm. if, if we don't even have it. Mm. So that's, that's, that's what I think, but, that's what um, I believe about. I, I, I don't know how many people know about this act or this law in place because it looks like because of, uh, let's say, unemployment issues, these young men and women are employed into it, I mean, by these politicians, by these uh, big people that go and guard my land go and do, without knowing that its implication it will have on their future. So what do we have to do to let them know that there is an act in place to make sure that it, you don't do this? Because once they don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that because they don't know, they will not be prosecuted. Yes. But sh sh don't you think people should know or be aware that there are acts or there are laws in place Exactly. And so they have to. Uh, uh, exactly. You know, it's very good you have brought up this question. And just like you said, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Exactly. And so I'm very happy that we're having this program today. Mm. And then this also forms some form of advocacy okay. and then some form of awareness creation because there are millions of people that are watching. Mm. Mm. And so we need everybody to know mm. that if you are being procured, Okay. You are being directed, you are being instructed, mm. your mind is being controlled mm. to engage in land guard activities. Mm. You should know that when you are caught, you are looking at a minimum of five years imprisonment. Mm. And so if you will rather go to jail for five years, which once you are arrested, and then we can establish that that is what you were doing. Probably they are thinking that because I belong to a political party or a group, I, I will not be prosecuted, just like doctor said. But there are people in jail. <laughs> you see, when you go to our jails, mm. it is not only one color party <laughs> that is in the jail. Yeah, exactly. Everybody is there. Mm. And so if you want to take that risk, mm. that because you belong to party, party A or, or party, party B, B, 
-hmm. you will go ahead and, and then do it. Mm -hmm. Once you are arrested, you will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the big fishes get away. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, are you a big fish? Do you have clouds enough <laughs> to also get away? To get away with it. Mm -hmm. And so we need people to know that it is an offense, it's a crime. If you are caught, you go to jail. You cannot contest for any public office for, I think, a minimum of 10 years. And so if you have these intentions, the people do not know. Some even think that, oh, once I, I am caught, we'll go to court, and then they'll find a way and I get off. But you have a conviction on your record. Mm -hmm. Once you have a conviction of, on your record for specifically this act, it goes a long way to bar you from you know, partaking fully mm. in the democracy of this country. Okay. So that, that's, that's what I believe. Okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll come to you again. Uh, doctor, as a security expert, what do we have to do? Well, I think what we have to do, just as my colleague panelists said, you see, for me, prevention is usually better than trying to kill uh, you know, what we have failed to prevent. We, some of us have advocated several years, uh, you know, to get a national security policy, you know, document together. Fortunately, the national security put it together, you know, so you can imagine since independence, it's just, I think two years ago or so, we had a, a national security policy document put together to serve as a guide and some of us had to keep pushing till we had it now uh, what needs to be done is to ensure the source of uh, what do you call it these firearms uh, i'm sure if people are not committing crimes there won't be the need to tighten a certain existing law or it, or even promulgate a law that will you know deter people because then if there is no if there is nothing then there is nothing to deter yeah. what some of us have pushed for is to get the draft bill the okay. national to make the the small arms commission become uh, an arms commission okay today if you boku uh, is a war zone uh, where you can literally not drive into boku and come out mm. and the amount of Weapons that are in Boku are not small arms. Mm. They say small arms, pump action, AK-47, mm. and some submachine guns. They are using, mm. you know, all manner of weapons. In the I was there a year, or, yeah, last year or so with the security couples. We went on a tour to mm. Boku, and it, you can't just drive in there. Mm. So what needs to be done is to make sure we have an enactment mm. for the small arms commission today to become a regulator. Because at the moment, uh, when containers arrive at the ports, yes. you don't have, the small arms don't have permission. And when I say there is no law backing them to inspect containers, okay. and their specific need would be to identify illicit weapons that are hiding in the containers. Right. And so, uh, or when aircraft land, okay. usually you have security yes. officers inland boarding the aircraft to inspect and make sure uh, you know, weapons are not hidden mm. in the aircraft before it leaves and the aircraft mm. as it arrives, while mm. as it disembarks. Mm. Once there is no law mm. permitting the agency to do that, mm. then it becomes difficult. Mm. It means that you are literally going to be working on second or third party mm. arrest. Mm. And so maybe a customs officer whose work is uh, collecting taxes and mm. all that, yes. he would find a weapon Mm. And call hey, Masa, we found a weapon, so mm. come and take it. Mm. But probably mm. you you would have seen more weapons if you were part of the team that is inspecting. Okay. So the law mm. to regulate, mm. you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, importation, yes. manufacturing, yes. storage. Yes. As we said, yes. we don't have a, a shooting range. We don't have a mm. training facility. Mm. So you have the reason why you have a lot of domestic. Uh, you know, abuse or misuse of firearm is because the mm. guy has gone to literally procure a firearm. He's been licensed, yes. a, li a licensed mm. firearms yes. uh, bearer. Yes. If you do, we have uh, a training facility for civilians to go to yes. and be able to train to use mm. firearm mm. or to maintain that firearm. Mm. 
I know of incidents where armed robbers broke into the place. The you know the house owner picks his uh, you know pump action weapon which yes. he procured ten years ago, mm -hmm. and he's shaking like a like like a foul. Mm -hmm. And the armed robbers come in and they take the weapon from him yeah. and they slap him too, and they won't even steal and they leave. They won't even rob him again mm. because what they have had is more valuable than going in there to rob him. Exactly. Because then it takes them a lot. Because sometimes they hide, you know, uh, these firearms. Mm. And so if he comes to your house and he finds them. But if we put in the law, the law, you go to Alabanyo mm -hmm. in Konya area. Yes. Go to Abu Abu. Yes. Go to other places yes. in the north. Yes. In Accra. Yes. Those who were, we, we had the, the blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. You know, we have those. Yes. Uh, we typically do. in every community we, we had. Today, they are still there. Yes. Generations have inherited from grand, great grandparents. Yes. What are they producing? Yes. They are no longer producing that descent because uh, the Chinese are producing that descent and bringing them in. Uh -huh. So they are producing firearms, but yes. who is regulating it? Yes. Artisanship. You yes. cannot stop uh, artisanal firearm production. Yes. We can regulate it by yes. putting them in, you know, in groups mm. and making sure that the firearms you are producing mm. would meet a certain standard. Mm. That we mm. should have facilities. So, so this law, mm. we, we took, uh, it's taken us over four years mm. to draft the law with mm. the help of ECOWAS, mm. the AU, GIZ, the Germans and, yes. you know, yes. European Union yes. have aided us to do it. Yes. What is now left is for us to get it passed into law. Fortunately, government has promised to get it passed into law. Okay. We are getting the Minister of the Interior is going through the process of making sure the control list. Okay. We should have the national control list, yes. which uh, helps us to know what we are yes. controlling. Yes. Yes. So that, I think, very soon uh, might end up, might go to cabinet and it will be passed into mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. Once all these things are done, which we should have done first, then you can have uh, you know, the preventative laws, mm. like my colleague lawyer said, with re my colleague, uh, you know, uh, the lawyer said, what's the name? Uh, the, 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 the act is not useless per mm. se. Mm. But at the moment, what we need mm. to strengthen that particular law, we don't have it. Okay. So you will try and try and try. Mm. But once you are not stopping the supply chain, okay. You get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> then the law is, is, is inactive. It, it will be there 25 years, 5 years, this. That, 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 that. Yes, maybe one or two people could be prosecuted. But what my final words would be to thank uh, yourselves. Let's continue to advocate or else uh, some countries are becoming banana republics mm. like we can see in the Sahel. And this issue of security, vigilantism, and all these things are very paramount. Mm. This is how Boko Haram and the rest started. Mm. And so if we can put in measures mm. to ensure mm. that when we sleep, we sleep. Mm. Uh, it's important. And also, to help the police do their work. Mm. I'm, I'm an advocate for the police okay. and security in okay. general. If we can help all the security agencies, i.e. the police leading them, mm. to make sure things are done right, mm. 2024 mm. will pass. Because mm. as we sit, there is going to be another by-election, we are told, in yeah. the corner. Mm -hmm. And so, and the police did well in, what was the name? Asin, Kumewu, Kumewu. And they did well Asin, in uh, Asinov. Asin Asin yes. We want them to do well uh, in 2024 so that the bloodshed we saw in 2020, we don't see it. So that whoever wins, we congratulate you. Whoever, yes. whoever loses, we say better luck next time. Yes. So this will be my last words. And mm -hmm. also uh, thanking you for bringing me onto this program. I, I, let me also um, hear from Leia Sina. So, as a legal practitioner, I mean, doctor has said so many things. What do we have to do? I mean, do we have to bring civil society organizations? How do we, I mean, draw people's attention to these laws in place? Okay. So, that we, I mean, so, I believe that this should have a multifaceted approach. The law, the draft bill that um, the team is putting together hopefully to get it passed, is one way to deal with it. But we need to look at the act, the 999, yes. in a much broader sense. All right. Because the act deals with the, the vigilantism and land guard activism yes. with the use of offensive weapon yes. as one aspect. Yes. And then it also deals with it without the use of offensive weapons, where the macho man syndrome mm -hmm and then the cutlasses, yes. machetes, yes. and things are used. So they are, they, we need to find that distinction. All right. And then it also deals separately with 
those uh, Azoka boys and yeah. all those kind of yeah. groups that yeah. are formed, yeah. you know, to intimidate, yeah. to, you know, to cast a slayer on elections, mm. carrying of uh, mm. ballot boxes, mm. and then all those things. Mm. And so we need the, a holistic approach. Mm. This aspect will deal, the, this law that is being drafted, mm. will deal with the, the arms aspect of it. Mm. Mm. The intimidation, the harassment, mm. the physical abuse, mm. the use of machetes mm. and all the others mm. would also be dealt with mm. by the substantive law. Okay. And so we need the civil society organizations to also step in okay. to join the advocacy, okay. to let the people know mm. that we have a law yeah. that deals with you know, some, of, some of these things. And that those who are not even aware that if you are caught under this law, mm. you can be barred from even contesting any public office. Mm. Mm. All these people should be, should be in the known. Mm. And then again, you who is involved mm. in this whole process yes. can go to jail. Yes. Minimum five years, 10 years, up to about 25 years if you yes. are caught using arms. Yes. And so in the process of regulating the arms aspect, yes. this law will come in handy. Yeah. All the pieces of laws that are scattered within our uh, body of le legislative, mm. you know, writings yes. would also come in handy. Yes. So as much as we need this law, we would also need an overarching law on the national security mm. and then all those mm. um, laws that will help us mm. to implement. Mm. So uh, th that's what I essentially I would, I would say as my last words. The SOEs, um, the civil society organizations, yes. sorry, yeah. will have to come in. Mm. We all have to play our role. Mm. Don't allow yourself to be used by this political by this polit party. Yes, don't allow yourself to be used. Because at the end of the day, their children are studying abroad. They have private mm. medical, uh, medical facilities mm. abroad. When you have your ear cut or your hands cut, we are all going to Kolebu. And I mean, problem. not to say yeah. we have some of the finest medical practitioners mm. on the continent at mm. Kolebu. Mm. But then, don't allow yourself to be used because mm. you stand a risk mm. of going to jail yes. for up to 25 years. Yes. And that's yes. no mean thing. It's not. So I, I think that's where I would rest on, on this thank, matter. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, coming to educate us. Do not fall foul to this. If you do, you'll be prosecuted and you spend a minimum of five years to a maximum of 25 years in jail. You do not want to go through this for someone's personal gain. Election is just around the corner. Do not go through this for someone's personal gain again. Be advised. This is Legal Agenda, and my name is Matilda Boatinati.